everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. Well, I have an exciting new video for you today. Today, I am going to be building up the final uh, production model of the brand new Andy's Hobby Headquarters 116 scale M4A3 EH Sherman, the one you see right here in front of you. So, like I was just saying, these kits are complete. They have left the factory and they are on container ships all around the world heading out to everybody. And they should be here actually fairly soon, depending on how long um, it takes to get around the world. But uh, today I am going to do a more in-depth build than I normally would do. I'll show you a lot of the new features. The, the prototype didn't have all this, the cool uh, options that the actual final production kit does right here. So like opening hatches on the engine bay, um, ha other kinds of things like that. You'll see all that in the actual video. Today's video is going to be just the actual build because like I said, I wanted to be a little bit more in depth with that and I didn't want to make this too long. Part two will be the painting and weathering and all that kind of stuff on that and that should be out fairly soon as well. So sit back and relax and today we are going to build up the brand new 16 scale Sherman. So let's get started. Okay, let's assemble the lower hull. So I am working on the rear uh, plate of the tank. This is where the opening for the engine would go. And we are going to just start attaching pieces as they would fit. I've gone ahead and attached these areas where the, the tow hooks go. And now we're gonna go ahead and attach inside here the rear door for the engine. And now that the rear plate here is mostly done, we can start working on the transmission cover. Now I've gone ahead and started to attach the connection points here and very easy to put on because they're coded to the, the size of each one of the pegs. And that's something that you'll notice throughout this kit is it's very hard to put something in the wrong place because the pins are all designed to fit specifically for that. And I'll show you what I mean in a few minutes there. So now we need to go ahead and attach the sides of these. And you'll notice in here, they're all beveled and there's the corresponding bevel on the other side. So we have to run an ample amount of glue here or cement and that is because we want this to stick very very well and just like that you can see a nice tight fit that comes up with that and of course I'll put some more cement up on top here and then once that gets done this is a piece that's already been cut out that'll get glued into place just like this so Or this one will actually fit into place there. So there we go. It's, uh, yeah, yeah, that's how it's supposed to go. So they're, they're coated for each side of the tank. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna get both sides of this transmission cover on and both of the final drives on here. And then I'll start showing you how all the pieces plug on to the hull. And let me show you now how we start to assemble the hull. First thing we need to do, I've already applied cement here is to attach this support piece through the back here and run a little bit of cement down this piece and i will run more cement along the inside once i get all of this stuff fitted to give it some uh, some strength but we're going to take our plate right here carefully drop it in just like that you see how well all of that fits together. Just put a little pressure on it to make sure the glue sets up just the way we want. And now that that has dried back here, we are attaching the two exhaust, as you can see are on either side, just like that. And we can also attach a tow hook as well. Now we need to attach all of the return rollers on the top and they are two different types, but the way it is set up right here, it's very hard. Uh, I would say almost impossible to put it on the wrong spot because if you notice right on here, there is a big peg and a little peg. And that only corresponds to the big peg, little peg on this one. The return roller on the other side is two even sized pegs. So you, those will just drop right into place just like that. So you pretty hard, unless you really force it really hard, 
it's going to be tough not to get it in the right position. So we need to attach that little cement on there. And it, you'll see here in a second that it's a different type of return roller. So there's a double here, a single here, and that'll get glued right into place just like that. And the return rollers, the way they go together are, you can see here, there's a, whoop, there's a separate piece for the back here to give it, even though you're not gonna be able to see it, they're all the detail on the other side of the wheel will be there as well. So we've got to put all of those into place right now and I'm gonna go ahead and do it just like that. And then we can go ahead and attach the, the front here, the transmission cover. And you see how it just slides right into position, just like that. And I will go ahead and glue that on as well. And we can also attach the idler wheel support on both sides of the hull as well. Now that all of this is attached to the lower hull, we can start building the bogies, which you see I've got built up right here. And if you build them correctly, they will have motion. Not fully work because obviously the springs aren't real inside here, but they will give a, a movement inside each one of these. So let's show you how these go together. First thing we need to do is we need to build up the wheel sets. And the wheels are an A and B side, and we wanna go ahead and install, which I've already done on this one here, this little plug, and that will create the, uh, the ability for the wheel to actually spin. And then it's just a matter of running cement all along the inside here, making sure you've got a decent amount. And they are keyed, so there is a little way that they actually snap together. And I have found that taking some of these little clamps right here and actually taking the little uh, little supports off the end, make them fit perfectly. See right here, they grab the wheel just right. And I will go ahead and put one, two, three of them. And I found that that works really well for getting a nice, uh, nice amount of liquid cement to come through the seam and then you can sand it off and get a really nice wheel just like that. So once that is done, we can start assembling these assembly arms and please pay very careful attention to the numbers they call out. Because remember, you wanna have this slotted piece going forward because it's actually supposed to be that way on the real vehicle. They will fit the other way, not as well, but you wanna just make sure when you put them on, they are sticking out. And then if you see over here, I've already got kind of the sub assemblies put together on that. And the other thing you need to do is to install the volute springs. And the way that is done is you take this volute spring support, put some cement on there. And then you take the first volute spring, put it this way, take the other one and put it the other way, just like that. Let that set up for a few minutes and then do the exact same thing with the other side. They're, they're the same part for both sides so you don't have to worry about getting that long just make sure that you got enough cement on there so it will stay together really well give that a good squeeze let that dry for a little while and then you are ready to assemble the pieces so the way that is going to be so i zoomed in a little bit closer so you'll be able to see it a little bit better now we take the two sides the a and b side of the suspension arm here or the shock, I should say, not the suspension arm. This is the shock on the top. And carefully get one side lined up, grab onto the other one. And I've already put cement on here before I started filming and you have it just like that. Now we're gonna let that dry for a little while. I've got one here that I've already put a little bit or given a chance to dry. We've got to sand that top seam and then we need to apply this little piece here that goes on top of the suspension piece, just like that. Now, this T shape here, which corresponds to this T shape, will go together just like this. Flip it around and we can now attach this bottom portion just like that.
now we can put all of the suspension pieces together. So the first thing we do is we put the uh, volute springs in here. No glue on this part right here. You want them floating in there. Also, you want to make sure that this taper, this step down right here, matches this top piece right here because you want all of them to be going the same direction. Now, they'll be all going the same direction on one side of the tank, and I'll explain that in a minute because they use the same bogey on both sides. So in uh, one side of the tank, they're all going on. This is on the back, and on the other side, they're on the front, but we'll show you that in a minute. So now this is floating in here just between that. And what we'll do is we'll flip this around. See those two little pegs right there? They will correspond to in here. Once again, no glue at all on any of these pieces. We'll get that in there, snap that into place. Then we have our front plate. Now, in that little tiny kind of castle shaped amount, we do want to apply glue in there. And once we do that, it'll match to this one. And what that'll do is we'll push that together nice and tight and that'll snap into place there and without putting glue other than that one little spot all of this should have that that motion that we talked about so let me get it go ahead and get this glued on and then I'm gonna show you the wheels being attached so now the next part is super simple you just have this center shaft that I've just press fitted into place and we just need to go ahead and put these on here put this other piece on the other wheel just like that and just using, just pushing it on, they fit nice and tight. Uh, I'm not going to glue them because there is a possibility. Don't know if it'll work or not for sure, but I might be able to pull these off when we go to paint. We'll see if there's enough clearance and stuff once we get it all on there. But if not, we can paint around it anyway. And it's tight enough that uh, the wheels will still spin, uh, but not fall off. And then once we have that, as you can see, I've already started putting the other side here together. There are two pins here that match those two holes, and it's just a matter of gluing those. They just snap right into place there. And since I've already done the other side here, you can see as soon as you lay it down, because the suspension slightly works, everything immediately touches the ground and levels out just the way it's supposed to be. And the same thing will happen for this. So we have our drive sprocket. It's two pieces that I've just glued together. There's a little center pin in there. Once again, no gluing it. Just want to press fit it into place. That way you'll be able to spin this to put the tracks into place. And you'll also notice that I've built up the, re, uh, the idler wheel. Now the idler wheel goes together just like all the other ones. There's a little pin inside there that will make it so it can spin but you don't want to glue the outer hub of this on too because there is a way i'll put it on this side that this is adjustable that you can swing this out and put the tracks on and then apply this to the outside of it and it'll make assembly uh, or putting the tracks on that much easier on and because of this unusual shape right here you should be able to tighten this by rolling this out and stretching the tracks a little bit. And when you do that, you'll get a nice tight, tight track and not have any of the sag because Shermans don't have sag in their track. Okay, and this is what I was talking about earlier about how these little pieces right here and the step down in the volute track. So you see, we're looking at the right side facing. So if we're facing the vehicle, the right side of the vehicle, all of those volute springs kind of point like an arrow shape towards the rear of the vehicle. And you see this little piece up here on each one of those, those are on the back side of the bogey. When we reverse it around here, same thing. Here is the arrow pointing, but it now points towards the front of the vehicle. And those little pieces up on top here now are on the front of the bogey. So just a minor little thing, but I thought I would show you guys on that. And with that, we can now start assembling the track. And I'm gonna show you the track and hopefully I can keep my hand out of the way here. Let me rotate the camera. These are the bottom plates of the track, and I'm just gonna stack a few of them up together here. See the, the pin is already installed. Slide that out of the way. And we have now our top of the track, and I've just put a little bit of cement inside there. And now I'm going to install the guide horn, just like that. So let me show you what we do. Very simple. Take our piece with the guide horn. This one's already been drying for a little while. And we apply cement just on the inside, nowhere near that groove, because we want it to keep working. And maybe just a touch right here on the outer edge. And we literally just drop it into place here. And I'm gonna drop it on this middle one because we still have one more piece to put on that. And same thing with this outer piece here 
drop it into position just like that. And once you do that 77 times, you will be ending up with a nice, beautiful set of T66 tracks. And now I'm gonna to explain to you how to actually put them on. First of all, we wanna talk about how they go on in the right direction. So if you look at the front of the track right here, you see the little, little cup shapes. If you're looking front on on the vehicle, those cup shapes go up like little mountains on the front of it. Now, the way the instructions call out is to build up the entire set of tracks just like this and leaving the drive sprocket and the either wheel the outer portion of each on them you can slide it on and this will work there is one little difficulty when you go to do that you do have to just slightly flex up this fender to get the guide horn to slide up underneath this outer wheel. Now you could leave this wheel off, the outer hub on this one, and it'd be no problem at all. You'd be able to slide them on and off. And um, if I, well, not if, when I build a second one, I might even do it that way to make it easier to get the tracks on and off because I don't want to attach the tracks right now because obviously it's a lot easier to paint and weather the tracks off the vehicle. But if you do anything like this, this is also the way that I will be putting these on. So I'm gonna put them on like a real set of tracks. So I just thread them through. You can see how the guide horns slide right down here and the, the track uh, holds up really nicely. Then all we have to do over here is install the last set link. And you will have nice sets of track just like this. They'll be flexible and movable just like that. But because like I said, I want to paint them separately, I'm going to leave them both off right now. And that last, that 77th link will get added just at the very end. Now we can start working on the upper hull. The first thing we need to do though is flip it over here and you'll see a couple of different holes. We need to drill the outermost ones closest to the, uh, the wall on both sides. These are for the lifting hooks. There is another set in there and that is for another variant for like a Korean War style one. But for right now, we need to just do the outer ones on that. Now, I'm going to show you the instructions on this and just let you see. There is just a whole bunch of little pieces and the, the hatches that we need to put on. Very, very simple, straightforward. I've done it now multiple times on tests and things. So I won't show all of that being built um, as well as this page right here. Just some basic stuff that needs to go on. As soon as I get all those little tiny parts on, I'll come back and I'll show you how the rest of it goes together. And here is what the front is going to look like with all the little accessories in place here. So our rear view mirrors here operate. And this is something that we had uh, altered a little bit from the first test shot are the opening of the hatches here. And they're on a pivot, as you can see here. It's kind of cool. And all the internal parts of the hatch are inside there. So we can open and close those. On the vision ports, I've masked off with a liquid mask over the, uh, the actual periscope, not vision port, over the periscope. So that is done there. So now what we can do is we can start adding the parts to make up the engine deck. Now, a, another thing that we've added on to this kit since the prototype is the ability for the rear engine deck to open. And here's one of the built up plates. So beautiful, nice job on the louvers, but we've also built up this plate here that has these other louvers here that will attach to it. And we also have hinges now. So let me show you how this is gonna go together. I've drilled out the little holes right here as it's called out for, because that is the area where the other half of the hinge will go. And this fits in here nice and tight. Of course, we're gonna glue it. And once you get that piece in there, we go ahead and we can install these. And you wanna install that first, cause then the next piece will be to drop the hinge on there. And when you put it in there without too much glue, you should be able to open up the rear engine decks. And that is if case uh, aftermarket company wants to go ahead and put uh, build an engine. This is a Ford V8 that are inside these uh, A3s. And then of course, once we get all that done, we can go ahead and attach this rear plate here as well. And very, very simply, we have most of our upper hull. So I'm gonna go ahead and put all that stuff together and I'll show you how it all looks once I get it all glued on. And here it is, here's those pieces on in place. And just like I was saying earlier, we have our rear hinges working there. 
and came out pretty good on it. Now there is a bunch, once again, of a bunch of little pieces like the, uh, the lifting hooks for the back here. They need to get glued on, some other little supports, things like that, that I'm going to go ahead and very, very easy, straightforward stuff. I'll kind of show them to you right here in the instructions. Uh, you can see there's nothing that will be super difficult. All tools and accessories like that we're leaving off for right now because I like to do that and paint them separately and apply them later on. So I'm going to go ahead and put all those little accessories on and I will show you what it looks like once it's done. And here it is with all of the little parts glued on to the back here, except for this, because I want to actually show you how this goes on and why this is a separate piece. So a lot of 35th scale kits uh, include these things already molded into the back. And this is one of the guards right around here around the fuel filler. But you'll notice that there's this little notch here that's cut out. That is a drainage hole that is visible now and as well as the drainage hole that is right in through here. So all of those parts are molded separately so that drainage hole can be included inside there. And also, one other thing I built up was this piece right here that once you put it in is fully workable. Let's see, just like that. And the other thing, let's see if we can show you the whole thing on here, is the overall fit. Normally, you know, when you go to get these things put into place here, they want to fight you a little bit because it's it's big pieces. And But I was just test fitting this, and the fit is incredible on the entire kit. And all you have to do is just kind of snap those little pegs into the, the right little spot down here. And, I mean, look at the fit. No glue, no nothing. Just, just the way it works, just like that. So... And that has been the case on everything inside here, whether it be the hatches or the way this thing moves. Everything fits the way it is supposed to. Well, now that I've snapped this upper hull on here, and you see the majority of it is in place there, I'll check the instructions, make sure there's a few parts that I haven't missed. I'm just going to actually leave this sitting on top of here because it's going to be way easier to put these little brackets right here. These hold the fenders on. So we've glued the fenders in place and now it is time to install all of these little brackets here and they go all along the side, actually both sides of the tank, putting just a touch of cement on the top and bottom and then making sure that they stay very, very straight in, um, in relationship to the side of the fender there. So it shouldn't take very long to do that. And then once we do that, I will just, like I said, double check the instructions, make sure there's no other parts I need to mess with before I attach the top and then I will go ahead and glue the top on and once I glue the top on I can attach the front fenders which have their own little peg right inside here just have that out there just like that and make sure those all align and then there's also a little piece right here that is the other side of the fender it goes just like this and that little push pin mark both of those little push pin marks are going to get covered over because they actually hide inside there. So you won't see either one of those push pin marks as well. So you can see how that just slides right in there. So I will go ahead and I will put all of the, uh, the little brackets on for the fenders and double check everything. And then I'll go ahead and glue the top down, the, the top hull down to the lower hull. Then after that, I think it'll be time to start working on the turret. And now that the lower hull is done, we can start working on the turret. And you can see I've got a whole bunch of little parts already cut out and sanded here. And before we start assembling anything, I wanna show you the clear parts here and talk about this. This is the Molotow Masking Liquid Pump Marker. And I've been using this a lot, like it's very, very easy. I'll pull the top off here. You got a little tip on it here and shake it up and it's very easy to apply masking. So these are the vision ports along the, uh, the cupola. So go over two coats on it there, let it dry. Then we could put them in place, paint, and then just scrape that off very easily and have still have our clear vision ports. Also did that on the glass and any of the other pieces here. So just something to keep in mind, very, very easy to use. With that now we have our turret as you can see here, and I've put a few little sub assemblies together. Like this is the uh, the little port here on the side. And I've attached the handle and the brace in the back here so you can see how they would leverage this open. Imagine this is a big, heavy uh, cast, cast metal uh, 
piece so we can leave it open or closed. I'll more than likely probably keep mine closed there. Got to do a little bit more sanding on that there. Uh, we have one of our, actually this is the, the loader's hatch and it's got the oval on it. And I've just attached the springs and the hinge as well as the little grab handle there. So things like that will go on. Then we have the mount for the 50 cal in stowage mode. Started putting that part together and then things like this. This is the uh, antenna mount and little things like this that I put together the three little pieces. This is the, uh, the front of the 50 cal barrel will fit into here and it'll get mounted right into place just like that. So obviously I've got a bunch of little tiny parts. Here's the 50 cal mount as well. And I'm gonna start putting all of those into place right now. Now we're gonna work on the parts that make up the elevation on the gun barrel. So here is the front, and we have these little round circles here that we need to put into place just like that. And very carefully only putting cement on the pins. We don't want any cement to get inside there. We line it up with the two pins actually going this way just like that and sandwich all of that together. Now for the rest of the gun, the inside parts, I actually just went ahead and put it together. There's lots of little pieces in here and lots of details you can see. Uh, and rather than try to have my hand in the way the entire time, you see how it goes right here. Once that is done, it'll get mounted into place just like this. And also there is the 30 cal machine gun that'll also get mounted in there in place. Now, uh, before we do that though, now that those little circle things have set up a little bit in there, we have these pins that'll get placed inside here and they have to be pushed in, lined up and pushed in. Let's see if I can get this in here. Yeah, there we go, just like that. And then the other one will go in on the other side. And these are the obviously the two things that the, the gun elevation rotates on. You can see it's easier probably if you look at the back here and you can see how it goes in. And once we have those pins in place, providing enough liquid cement inside here because we want this whole portion to stay in there very well, we'll apply this just like this. And we're gonna let this have plenty of time to dry and set up in there and maybe even run a little bit more cement on there just to make sure, because don't forget, it's gonna be carrying a lot of weight between this and then that long barrel sticking out, and it's all gonna be on this pivot point right here. Now that this has had a chance to dry, we've got our turret top here, being very careful not to knock off all the little accessories we just spent all that time putting on. And now we wanna carefully slide this into place and see how you line up that little hole right there with that peg that we just put in. And then we've got these caps here. And this cap, we get put into place and just pressure fit it in, just like that. And then there's one on the other side, just like this, that will put this cap in. Now that we have the, the back of the gun, all the breech area is all in the place here. Remembering that the weight on this is pretty heavy, but Keep in mind too, we are going to be putting a big heavy metal barrel in. So that is immediately gonna make it wanna droop. So we've got a few different options here. We're gonna talk about that as we put the mantlet into place. So first of all, we have the mantlet here just by itself, just with the lifting hooks on the edge uh, that you can put into place. Then we do need to do something because this is movable with the gun. If we decide we wanna put the rain gear on, we need to put this mantlet minus those lifting hooks in, into place here. And then the mantlet gets put into place here, but that will actually glue the gun into a neutral position. Now it, it can't go neutral right now because those little lifting hooks are still in there and it won't let it get close enough. But if you do decide to put the, uh, the canvas um, rain gear on, 
Obviously, it's not real canvas, so the gun can't move. So that'll take care of that problem. If you do decide that you want to just have it just like this version here, and there's actually a third version too where you can put the little bolts on for the rain gear. Uh, so basically that it would be a later one that has the rain gear on it, but has the bolts on it and the gear is not actually on. Now, primarily the rain gear is seen a lot in Korean War ones, but there are pictures in World War II that they have this in place. So it's not inaccurate to do either version on it. So if we decide we want to put the one without the rain gear, and I'm sorry, this keeps falling off here. We're going to shove this big heavy barrel into place here. That will keep it on. But remember I said it's going to want to droop forward. Uh, a couple things we can do. We can go ahead and glue a little piece of plastic that sticks down from the top here that prevents the gun from going any higher. Or we have this option here too. We have 12 US pennies that we can fit behind up inside here that will actually make it neutral. So when we go ahead and put this in here, if I can get all that, my hands working here, right? With the barrel shoved in there, that should be enough weight that the barrel wants to balance. And you'll be able to move it up and down because it should be pretty much balanced with the muzzle brake on the, on the tip there. So that is all the different options you have with that. We also have the lower part of the turret, which I've glued this spacer in here, and that gives you that little front lip that'll get put on. So now I can go ahead, once I decide what I'm gonna do with all that, go ahead and glue this into place right on the bottom down there. And I see I lost one of my lifting hooks anyway. And the only other thing I need to do now is uh, install the cupola, which I started building that up right here. It has a working hinge. There's one more piece I need to put into place right here, as well as those clear uh, vision ports on here that I will go ahead and you see I already have the, uh, the masking fluid already in place. And then of course, we've got the two seats for the turret ring here too. This one is for the loader and this one is for the commander which if you plan on putting the figure in, the figure needs something to stand on and he will stand on that seat right there. So I am gonna make a decision how I wanna do the, uh, the matlet and the matlet cover here. And I will come back and show you what I decided on. And here we are guys, here is the completed model. Now there are a few things that um, I will do once the, uh, the paint job gets put on there. And as you can see here on the bottom, we talked about this earlier, the tracks are not complete in the sense there's one link missing. I wanna leave the tracks off so I can paint and weather them separately and then just drop that final link into place and pop them back on. Also, there are a few little pinholes all over the tank and those are where tools will go because I have left all the tools off. I wanna paint and weather those those separately as well. The only other thing is the tow cable. I've, I've built it and just stretched it across here, dropped it into place. It is not attached on the front or the back. Uh, there are some of these. Hopefully you can see them, these little uh, clasp right here with the uh, wing nut on it there. Real, really tiny stuff, but all this little ultra detail that really shows off very well. Also, I'm gonna flip this around and show you some of the back, the As tiny little right here. Uh, tie downs that are all over the vehicle. Those I did put on for right now. Uh, they're in place where they belong. So now I'm gonna go ahead and just give you a 360 view of the entire tank. And as we finish up here, uh, obviously the next steps are going to be putting paint on this and doing all of the weathering. Well, there you go. There's a look at how the new 16 scale Andy's Hobby Headquarters Sherman goes together. And I am very, very happy with the final product. I think the fit and finish, everything went together really, really well on it. 
So now all I have to do is take the tracks off, take all those other parts off and start painting everything and look for that video in the very, very near future. So I want to take this opportunity to thank you as always for watching and please stay tuned because I have many more videos coming.